So we mark these pieces 200 mil. We're gonna get a cross cut saw now, cut all them at 200, and then we're gonna 45 degree angle all of them. And uh, hopefully they should fit the supporting pieces because the video I was copying, once again, I'll, I'll link it in the description, more to life. He only put supports at the top and not at the bottom. So I'm gonna put supports at the top and bottom. Uh, but obviously I can only put the top ones in first, which I mark top and which I mark bottom. I know it's a bit self-explanatory because that's a bigger gap than that by 10 mil or 15 mil whatever it is but i'm just going to do it <laughs> for the sake of uh simplifying it because we're all bricklayers watching this hopefully and we can't uh, work his way around the saw so yeah i'll go cut this now and i'll get back to you and uh, with my results so here you can see me using the uh, cross cut saw and this is where it just makes it so much easier having the power tools uh, obviously you could do this with a table, you know, with just normal panel saw, uh, or wood saw and just use, use some trestles and do this. But obviously finding the 45 degree angle you'd have to obviously cut the template out that we made earlier using just a bit of roofers lat. And then you'd have to just keep copying that template all the way through which would get you just as good a cut but it'd just take you a lot longer. And as you can see how easy I was going through these with the, uh, with the table saw. Uh, you know, obviously having the 45 degree angle as you can see me moving it to there it just makes the job so much easier so and obviously this is the first time you're using this uh, you know circular so t table saw so even me as a complete novice makes it look a lot easier than <laughs> trying to use a panel saw a lot easier and this this is just some one of the things i've realized was why people want to become joiners or chippies what they're going to call them is because you know it's, it's so you know so cool using all these tools us as bricklayers were still at stone age smashing hammers against chisels so there you go as you can see fits lovely so uh, right we've got the top here as you can see so all these 45 degree pieces they're at varying lengths but they all fit. So they're gonna be our supporting pieces. Same again at the bottom. If you wanna put it to the bottom, fit the bottom as well. Nice and easy. So we've got, if we get this, got four of them. So for those pieces, we're gonna be using the 60 mil screw, 60 mil screws. Uh, on the video, I'm copying off use 40 mil but for these for the specific thing I'm doing here if you watch if you grab here let's have a look here let's grab one of these screws the reason I'm using 60 as opposed to 40 as you can see here my you know roofing lats going through sort of the middle the cross the square angle of that 45 and it's halfway through into this wood so that'll nick tight that's why I'm using 60 if anyone's wondering so I'm going to get the remainder of these wood, this wood that we fucked up earlier. I'm going to cut some more 200s for the bottom. So we're going to do, we've already, already got four for one side, now we need four for the other side of the table. So we're going to cut another four of those uh, 45 degree angle cross pieces using, obviously, as you can see here, 45 degree mark on the uh, DeWalt cross cut saw. And yeah, let's go. Got all those cross pieces now, supporting pieces. Now we're going to move this monstrosity again. Which is a bit of a pain ass. I can see why on the video I use the circular saw. This is a you need another table really, and I've got a set of trestles here, but I've got no board to really work on. So I could put two trestles, but I ain't got the space really, I, and I need to be able to film this the stuff here. So uh, it's raining outside as you know per usual. So just uh, remove this, and we're gonna attach the cross pieces. So as you can see, me drilling the cross pieces, little pilot holes. Uh, I just found it easier to get the uh, cross pieces set in place on the edge of the bench. And then after I drilled them with the cheap drill, which, you know, made, made the job a little bit harder. If I had a quality drill, it would go through like butter. And then obviously after I'd done that straight away, I grabbed uh, some screws at hand. I kept everything at arm's length, including the impact driver, and then uh, screwed them straight in with the impact driver. What I tend to do as well with these big screws, I shove them in my hand, just like twist them in my hand, look easy, 
get them there, and then the uh, I let the impact drive do the do the work for the pilot hole, and uh, it always sit, seats itself nicely. You just got to hold the cross piece tight, so it doesn't start whipping around, and then uh, I just go steady with the impact driver because it tends to just mince its way through the wood, and then uh, you can end up getting splits if you're not careful. And so I just moderate my uh, my trigger finger. Also, obviously, you can see how small the bench is, so I'm having to spin around all the time to try and get a, my eye down, because obviously I'm a rank novice, so, you know, a, uh, you know, experienced joiner and be able to just stand up straight and screw, screw plumb and level. But, obviously, myself, I have to get down right low, so. And I'll get on to the next clip now. So as you can see, I did it in situ. So I used the, obviously my cheapo drill. Drill the, drill the little pilot holes at the right hand. I like to get right down. I like to get round like a sniper, just so I can see if I'm parallel. And then, uh, then as you can see, uses the impact drive. It's powerful. This is a quality one, quality Makita piece of kit here. But I got a bit carried away with this one. So it split it slightly, because I, I, can you see how deep I've bedded that screw in? You know, you only got to be flush, really, guys. You don't have to fucking, you don't have to, uh, you know, go deep style on it. You know what I mean? It will split the wood, the, you know, if you, the deeper you go. Uh, but, yeah, so that's the top piece done. Now what we're going to do, we're going to replicate this again. What we're going to do is, a sim you know, slightly different measurements. We're going to unscrew this first. So I'm going to unscrew this now. And then that... We can make sure we keep this piece separate. We'll move this away from where we're working. Unscrew this. So now we know that's square. And then obviously this is why we have to set this piece off to slide the other set in. So right, on to a second beer now. Let me grab that. A the old Corona. Pain in my ass. This last fucking year and a bit. Sorry for swearing. But, right. We've got first section made. Now we're going on to the second section here. So this we're going to call this top. So this is going to be his top side. So where's my pencil? I'm going to do it, make it even simpler here now. I'm going to write top. Because we're losing the daylight. It's half six. It's cloudy. It's not sunny. So top. Top. So... I'm going to voice a lot of this over when I time lapse it. So when I do the, because uh, obviously if you've seen throughout the video, I've been voice overing clips where you can see me what I'm doing. I'm explaining it step by step because the the video by Motor Life, obviously plug it again. I'm copying off that video, slight variation. Uh, it just did it all for GoPro as you were doing it. So it's this is going to be slightly more going through the you know little bits of how I'm doing it step by step. So you can, as a first timer doing it, you can just watch as, you know, it's a bit more step by step than me just quickly doing it. Because the guy had made already five and I'm only making this, I'm making this for the first time. And it looked, to be fair, when he, when he were doing it, it looked pretty handy with a, a saw and that. So this is for someone, bricklayer status, true bricklayer status, never used a saw before really, other than to, you know, to be honest, I'm one of the people who just cut my blocks around to roof for uh, join us timber i don't even like to cut it off it takes me ages so we're going to do the first top piece 100 mil so 100 and that's going to be his line 100 mil wherever it, wherever that is and then we're going to make the second line where the center where a screw is going to go 125 and then the bottom i'm not going to lie i'm going to have to re-watch the video again and have a look how i did that bit but we're going to we're going to mark this side do it on camera, and I'll get back to the bottom.
So we've done one leg, top, bottom. So we're gonna go, we've gone one, one hundred. So obviously this is the top of the other lots of legs. 100 and 125 centre where the screw is going to go. Bottom of the second lot of legs. 120, that's where the wood's going to go out from. Centre at, centre at wood, screw is going to go there. So we're going to do the same on that one. You know, we're going to, I'm writing on them just for simplicity for myself to be honest. So we're going to do that one, get back up to the footage. Right, so we've got its top and bottom marked, all marked up. Where is wood's going to be going? Right, so now we're going to go back to his bolt setup where we had his wood. Can't quite remember which went with which. I'm just going to guess. No, I'm not really. I'm going to go and check it, check it out. So I'm going to go up to this piece and uh, see if this marries up with that. And if it does, then this piece, this bottom piece, is going on the bottom of that one. So let's check it out. Right, we're going through, at the moment, I don't know what's going on with power, but we're going through a bit of a power cut. Uh, rain's happened, uh, and, you know, Mrs. is thinking I'm fucking about with electrics, but it's actually, obviously, because of a bit of rain, uh, it's fucking, power's fucking out. So, anyway, right. You can see it coming back on and off, like, it's, it's tripping. But, anyway, right. <laughs> what a fucking day. Right, we're gonna that. So we we found out that marries up, right? And obviously we've marked his bottom. So I'm gonna mark that face side bottom. So I'm gonna do that right now. So that's gonna be a bottom piece. So we know they marry up, and obviously the, you know, the, the measurements, you know, up to a to a mil. You know what I mean? We're we're nearly there, right? So we're gonna move that piece. And we're gonna get on with the rest of it, and we know the the other piece must be for the top. So let's crack on. So I'm going to voice over this last few clips, it's just me uh, drilling the you know, pilot holes and you know, impact driving the screws into it. I was getting better throughout this build and it took me about two and a half to three hours to finally finish this one. Obviously the power cut out halfway through uh, me making the video so obviously I've had to time lapse a lot of this uh, with two times speed so it still isn't that fast considering obviously uh, it sped up it took me a while uh i had a look at the length of this video it's about 44 minutes so i'm going to split this into two parts as well so you can see me you know drilling the cross pieces obviously just finishing everything off because your, your second table doesn't have to be um you don't have to leave the bottom off this one so you can i screw i screwed all four pieces of wood together and then i obviously put all four cross pieces in uh it's only the top section that needs uh to be able to slide it over the top so same again as you can see, more of the same there. So I'm now sliding the bolts in to attach both of the uh, the, you know, the table legs. I put two washers in the centre of the two pieces of wood so it slides easier. And then I put a washer behind the bolt and just do these finger tight at both sides. This just holds the two lots of legs together so I could finally connect my last peak cross piece of wood. And then obviously after this, um, I had the rocking. I got the rocking effect as you could see. So 
what I was doing was, you know, I screwed, you could see myself screwing some packers into the top, so the, lev the, the, lev the legs sit straight. So, obviously here, if you make sure you do, you, you know, you bolt your cross pieces in, it's easier to then screw away and then put all your supporting pieces in at the same time. So you can see me doing that right now. Just screwing in the rest of the cross pieces. I do all these with just using the using pilot holes, and just, you know, screwing in the big, the uh, small screws. Here's me screwing the little packer I was on about earlier, uh, just because the table was rocking a bit, so I got a little sliver of Tyler's lat and then I screwed it into the top with the small screw. And it was solid, it wasn't moving after this, so this is a good thing to do. I could have, you know, like leveled all the legs straight and then put them all, but I thought this was an easier option since they didn't have to sit level, all they had to do is sit solid, so that worked. And I did it at both sides, so the table is reversible, so as you can see we're rocking a little bit again, so... Got another little packer off the floor and flipped it over and screwed it once more. And uh, it's a good, you know, it makes the table reversible. You don't, that's why I've got all, all the cross pieces in, uh, as you can see. And it just makes it more versatile. You don't have to flip it the right way. You just pick it up, unfold it, stick your board on and go. As you can see, I'm just uh, attaching the final cross piece with this, you know, putting my counter, you know, my little pilot holes in, just so every corner's got a cross piece in. Now it's super solid. There's no, there's gonna be no chance of it breaking anytime soon. So that's just gonna make it even more, you know, robust. So we'll come to the end of the clip now. There we go guys, one table sorted. Uh, as you can see, I've had to put a little packer, screw a little packer because it wasn't sitting level. Uh, I've done it one side, obviously, and I've done it at this side as well. Little, just a little packer screwed on. You can change these, which is the beautiful, you can change the feet on these, so if they get knackered, screw another little feet, foot onto it, you know what I mean? So if that gets knackered, screw a little foot onto that, and you can just keep them going, because I've made them reversible. Bring them outside here sits there lovely on ground uh, as you can see yeah, there's a little bit of rock in it it's completely finished we've got the uh, got the packers for the feet where it didn't sit evenly which obviously is my, not my perfect cutting and we've tightened the bolts up um, it's pretty stiff to open and close but you want them tight because they'll loosen over time uh, something else I wanted to mention is I've given it a little bit of a sand stop yourself getting splinters I only had fine sandpaper so it didn't really make too good of a job but it's something I might do later I might spray them or uh, put my name on it or something um, as you can see reversible so we've got two sets of supports you know bottom and top uh, the blue Tyler's lats a little bit thinner than the red I found so something to bear in mind and the me measurements it was quite easy once I'd finally mastered it what the measurements were i'll leave them in the description with the uh link to mortal ice video and uh yeah these should come in handy i'm going to make another one tomorrow i should be able to make it in about an hour or probably even less to be fair i could just do all these cuts straight away all them pieces i could do like two set two watts of them easily on the cross cut um i could make four sets of uh, eight sets of these eight sets of these i can get the these drilled a lot quicker uh, because I know I'm, I know what I'm doing now, uh, get them more even, and uh, yeah, 
And then when it comes to these, I've got loads of slithers. So if these ever do become, uh, if these become, you know, wobbly at some point, I can always screw another sliver on. And um, the reason why the wood doesn't split grain way down, is just because it follows the grain, it won't split. But obviously going through the grain that way, across will make it split. So that's why you put your pilot holes in, so. Thanks a lot for watching guys, hope you enjoyed the video. I know it's a bit long-winded, but I'll do some edits, speed it up and make it as smooth as I can. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.